Germany's new nuclear fusion reactor shocks the entire industry. For 50 years since the discovery of nuclear fusion, scientists have been trying to create similar reaction in laboratories. Nuclear fusion offers unlimited benefits beyond the scope of the human mind. The most important ones are safe, cheaper, and more efficient energy than a fission reaction. Recently, scientists in Germany made a historical revelation about nuclear fusion reactions. So what does this discovery mean for humankind? And how is it beneficial? Let's find out more in the video. Unlike nuclear fission reaction, nuclear fusion reaction does not produce any radioactive waste. It is an endless source of neat, clean, and renewable energy. Since 1953, almost $30 billion has been spent on nuclear fusion projects, but still there are not any desirable results. So what makes it so important that scientists are still trying to spend money on this? Recently, the Germany Max Planck Institute of Plasma Physics achieved a shocking milestone. This has increased the belief of scientists that they are moving closer to achieving nuclear fusion on Earth. First, you need to understand what is nuclear fusion and how it works. What is a nuclear fusion reaction? Nuclear fusion is a reaction in which two smaller atomic nuclei combine to form one heavier atomic nucleus while releasing a massive amount of energy. This reaction is the main reason for the burning of stars like the sun in our solar system. Nuclear fusion reaction demands conditions like it only takes place in plasma. A charged gas made of positive ions and free-moving electrons and it needs a high temperature of almost 100 million degrees Celsius and high pressure for a combination of nuclei. A single nuclear fusion reaction produces 17.6 MeV of energy, nearly four times more powerful than a chemical reaction. So a strong compact device is required to hold this energy. With all these conditions, it had been difficult for scientists to conduct a successful nuclear fusion reaction until now. But there is no stopping the scientists, as nuclear fusion reaction creates an indefinite source of energy that is much greater, stronger, and cleaner than a nuclear fusion reaction. Production of such energy will change the meaning of electricity production in the world. Success of Wendelstein 7X Delrator in Germany, Planck Institute of Plasma Physics, Griefswald turned on an experimental reactor and was successful in creating hydrogen plasma for the first time. The device in question is a $1 billion machine in Germany called the Wendelstein 7X Stellarator made and designed by supercomputers. In the recent experiment, the Stellarator heated up the plasma at 36 million degrees Fahrenheit or 20 million degrees Celsius and produced a nuclear fusion reaction that lasted about 26 seconds. The resulting energy was 76 megajoule, greater than the energy produced by Takamak. The energy produced was different from the energy we get from the fission reaction. A fission reaction occurs when two nuclei break and produce heat energy. A fission reaction produces 200 MeV of energy, but it also releases tons of radiation into the environment. On the other hand, a fusion reaction does not release radiation or any kind of waste. The heat produced during fission is much smaller than the heat produced during fusion. For reference, the sun can reach up to 27 million degrees Fahrenheit or 15 million degrees Celsius, and the energy produced for the Stellarator was greater than this. The shocking fact is that the Stellarator can produce much greater energy than this temperature. It was the first nuclear fusion experiment that lasted this long and produced such a high amount of energy. So what made it possible? First Nuclear Fusion Experiments in 1977, scientists discovered that a disturbance in the magnetic field produces a field of plasma and vice versa. They conducted an experiment where the plasma was able to control the charged particles and free electrons and confine them to a path. Using this knowledge, Russian scientists developed a device known as Takamak. These donut-shaped devices were designed to trap plasma inside a magnetic field while providing heat at the same time for hydrogen items to produce a nuclear fusion reaction. In 2015, the Takamak was able to produce 56 megajoule of energy, which lasted for 5 seconds. It laid the foundation for the current German device, the Stellarator.
The main parts of the Stellarator consist of a cryostat, a 16-meter wide container that encloses magnetic and helium liquid coolant, a vacuum vessel to allow magnets to reach as close to plasma as possible, 20 flat superconducting magnetics to adjust and combine the magic field, and 50 nonpolar cells that create a magnetic cage for hot plasma. In 2015, the Stellarator was first turned on, and it showed that for about one-tenth of a second, the device can hold in place a loop of helium ions heated to a million degrees. Though the plasma produced was much more stable, it was less powerful than the plasma produced in the Takamak. Working Principle of Takamak and Stellarator the tokamaks work by using electromagnetic field generated by the plasma. The field keeps the moving particles in a nice, tight, sealed path, generating massive energy when heat is provided. But the resulting energy comes unstable, making it unable to last for long. This is due to the shape of the plasma in the tokamak. The extreme heat accumulates in certain places at the edge of the reaction zone and, if not resolved, makes the reactor out of order. On the other hand, the Stellarator works by using magnetic coils to keep the plasma inside and offers greater stability and energy production for a long time. The main difference between the Stellarator and Takamak? Their ability to hold plasma in a confined space. When the scientific director for the Stellarator was asked about the stability, he said, In a Stellarator, confining the plasma is like holding a broomstick firmly in your fist. In a Takamak, it's like trying to balance the same broomstick on your finger. Recent Changes in the Stellarator The recent successful result of the Stellarator as compared to the previous experiment was due to some changes in the plasma vessel of the Stellarator. Stellarators rely on a complex and baroque arrangement of twisted coils to confine the plasma inside the machine's vacuum chamber. The plasma vessel was fitted with interior cladding. The vessel is now lined with 8,000 graphite tiles that allow higher temperature and powerful plasma discharge. Ten different have been installed from which we can control the density and purity of plasma. It diverts the direction of impure particles that affect the flow of plasma. The diversity was able to provide constant and stable high-density plasmas running for 30 seconds without interruption. Another purpose of Stellarator was to tackle the neoclassical losses. Scientists term neoclassical loss as a heat loss during transport. This type of loss occurs when high-energy particles collide and push other particles out of their orbit, causing some to stray out of the magnetic field. The Stellarator was designed to avoid this energy loss and confine the magnetic field into a tight space. The thing was using the ice pellets to reduce the turbulence of the plasma, which resulted in increased temperature of the ions, thus providing more heat energy. The reduced turbulence reduced the neoclassical loss, allowing the Stellarator to reach a higher temperature than the sun's core. Future of Stellarator and Fusion Industry The engineers for Stellar are working to introduce more advanced ice pellet guns and diverters to reduce neoclassical losses, which will allow the Stellarator to last for a half an hour. But it does not mean we can define a time period for achieving a full fusion energy plant. Many experiments had to be done before scientists can reach a stable fusion reactor. And the question of fuel is yet to be solved. The helium produced inside the generator is fusion of hydrogen isotope tritium. It is not found abundantly on Earth. It has been made in some reaction or may have been harvested from other planets. Getting stable electrical energy from Stellarator is still in question, but experiments like these tell us that we are going in the right direction. Currently, 10 Takamaks and Stellarators are working in the world today. Takamaks work by converting water into steam, and steam runs the turbines to make electrical energy. There are fewer Stellarators in working conditions due to their complex design and magnetic field. But chances are they will be in the coming years. Stellarator will be the future of fusion reactors. Who knows? We might be able to achieve zero neoclassical losses that can provide us a non-stop source of high-temperature plasma, thus providing a never-ending clean source of energy. This ends our video for today. Tell us what you think about the future of fusion and the effect of the Stellarator on the industry. Subscribe to my channel to know more about interesting discoveries and facts. See you in the next video.